Hi, good morning. It's Monday, April 6th, and this is our 16th community video update. Um, it's nice to see you back. Hope you all had a good weekend. We spent a lot of time outside. Uh, that was kind of our big goal for the weekend is just to get outside and get some fresh air, get some exercise, get some yard work done. Um, Saturday and Sunday were both very amenable to that, so it was really nice. Um, so anyway, let's get to the news and kind of figure out what's happened over the weekend. Um, unfortunately, the death toll um, and the rate of people that are ill um, has, of course, gone up a lot over the weekend um, throughout the course of America. And, um, and a little bit in the state of Maine, no new deaths though, which is really great. So that's amazing. Um, and I think we're still hovering just below 500 people testing positive. Now, uh, what I've heard is that it's, there's not a lot of tests to be had in the state of Maine. There are some, but not a ton of them. And so that may be one of the reasons that we have lower um, positive testing, not really sure. But anyway, we're just trying to keep our eye on it and stay at home. And that's kind of the, the biggest thing that they say you can do right now. The CDC has released some new guidelines. Um, so I'm gonna run through those with you. First of all, um, there's, they're, they've released guidance on starting to use face coverings while out, a cloth mask. Um, so where they're, they're recommending, they are now recommending wearing a mask in public settings um, where other social distancing measures are difficult to maintain. For instance, the grocery store, the pharmacy, etc. cetera, um, especially in areas of significant community-based transmission, i.e. the grocery store, where every single thing you touch is going to be covered in the virus, um, potentially. So if you have gloves as well, disposable gloves, that is great. Um, and so I think I've got to go to the grocery store today. I haven't been in a week. And we definitely need some stuff. Um, feeding a family of six is takes a lot of energy. And half the time, it's just Jonathan and I. And then the rest of the time, the girls are here and we've got kids in the house. So it's interesting how we'll go through a whole week, though. It kind of averages out. So today is my grocery shopping day. I need to get down there. Um, and I think I'm going to wear blue hand gloves uh, that I can then peel off after before I touch my car. Uh, and that might be helpful to not take the germs into the car off my hands. And also I'm gonna wear a mask. So we've had a bunch of them donated to the People Plus Center. Um, we're asking for more mask donations. So if you are making masks, please let us know. And if you need a mask, please let us know. Go ahead and call People Plus uh, at 729-0757 and we will figure out a way for you to pick up a mask. Um, okay, uh, so wearing a mask Per the CDC, wearing a mask, while it can be very, very helpful, does not replace the six-foot rule. So you still want to stay as far away from other people who are not in your immediate household as possible. Um, and we do have some masks, like I said. So um, we've also got a video link in this email today. So if you're watching this on the television, take a look out for the People Plus email that'll go out late this afternoon. Um, and we've got a link to how to make a no-sew mask. And I might actually try and do that maybe tomorrow um, as a part of this video. So you just, you fold a tea towel with um, some straps around it, rubber bands, and then you can make your own mask. So it was very clever. So we'll have the how-to video in today's email blast. If you're not getting our email blast and you want to, just email Jill and she'll sign you up. Her email is programming at peopleplusmain.org. Programming, P-R-O-G-R-A-M-M-I-N-G, -M -M programming at peopleplusmain.org. And Jill will get you signed up to get our daily email um, that has all kinds of great tips and stuff, but really the best thing it has are video links. And the videos will keep you entertained, they're fun, they're interesting. Today's video is actually Jonathan and I are starting Seeds. Um, and so it's just kind of a cute little video where we plant some seeds um, for tomatoes and zucchinis and pumpkins and stuff, but it's fun, it's interesting. And um, we'll have that uh, in today's link. Tomorrow we'll probably have Frank doing a chapter out of his book. And then we have a bunch of other guest videos that are about to happen. I'm actually recording uh, Charlie Evans, who's a member of the board of People Plus. Um, he is a zoologist and a canine physical therapist. So he's gonna do a video today for us on how to deal with your pets and the veterinary um, services during COVID and during the stay at home period. And then also um, I'm recording my sister-in-law. I'm gonna go out to my brother's farm where she has beehives and uh, I can stand more than six feet away from the beehives. 
um, and watch Julia sort of uh, deal with her bees. She's, she's getting them prepped for spring. So I thought that'd be super interesting. So we've got all kinds of really fun videos. Um, we've got a YouTube channel now and Vimeo.com. Both of those are People Plus channels. So People Plus Main on YouTube and the People Plus channel on Vimeo, V-I-M-E-O.com. They're both free and you can watch all of our videos, exercise, informative stuff, just fun things to keep you entertained. And um, all of our past presentations we've had at the center. So we've got Angus King, um, we've got Captain Kirk from the Zoom Walt from years ago. We've got Clayton Rose. Lots and lots and lots of presentations and lectures that we've had at the center are now available on our um, Vimeo and YouTube channel also. So let us know if you'd like the email blast. Email Jill at programming.com. I mean, programming at peopleplusmain.org and um, we'll get you signed up. So anyway, okay, so um, let us know if you want a mask. The CDC is starting to recommend using them. So there's no reason not to, is kind of how I see it. Um, the, the most important thing they say about it is you must take it on and off by the ear straps or by the ties. You don't want to touch the front of it, especially if you're shopping, because whatever's on your hands will then get on your mask. Um, and you either want to wash it in the washing machine between uses or spray it with um, an alcohol spray. And we made one actually here at home out of 151 Bacardi and vodka mixed with water. So you can actually do the same. And it's an alcohol spray. As long as it has about 63% alcohol, it's the same as a sanitizing spray. So that's what you're looking for. The general advice is don't go out. Stay at home. Uh, if you have anyone else going to get deliveries, use uh, delivery services if you can. Um, and your car for pickup for groceries, especially in the next, this week and next week are supposed to be the two worst weeks um, uh, for America as far as this whole thing is concerned. So um, if you go out, please know there may be lines outside of a store and uh, you may have to wait. Stores are limiting numbers inside um, at one time. Also, there may be traffic changes. So one entrance in and one exit out, just kind of pay attention to that stuff so that you give yourself plenty of time if you need it. Um, and then check your favorite restaurant, local restaurants, check the local uh, Chamber of Commerce website or the BDA website for updates. A lot of restaurants are starting to do full dinner service so that you can pick up a whole dinner meal if you need it, um, especially Easter. So there is a restaurant in Topsom that's apparently ordering um, Easter takeout. If you want any more information on that, give us a holler, check our website, we'll have a link to it. Uh, you have to order by Friday if you're going to get an Easter dinner though. And this is going to be an odd Easter. I think for a lot of people, Easter is normally a time of getting together. Um, it's also my daughter's birthday this year and Heidi Boyd's birthday. Um, they share a birthday on April 12th and it happens to be Easter. Apparently that hasn't happened for a long, long time. And it's the year of the COVID where we're all staying at home. So it's going to be definitely um, a different sort of Easter this year. So if you're looking for um, an Easter dinner, uh, you'd let us know and we'll, we'll tell you how to get one. Okay. Modified Amtrak schedule starts today. Uh, and runs through April 30th. One round trip per day for essential services only on Amtrak. So I'm not sure if you are an Amtrak user of regular, you know, regular Steed, but you can't really go anywhere except one round trip per day for essential services on Amtrak now. Um, and tonight there's a Brunswick Town Council meeting. So they've been meeting every Monday night at 6.30. Um, it'll be streamed on um, their uh, the Town of Brunswick website and then also on Channel 3 so that you can start um, paying attention to what they're hap what's happening with that. And then also starting today, unemployment claims and questions um, over the phone from the state of Maine will be done alphabetically. So Monday, today, if your last name starts with A through H, it's today. Tuesday is I through Q and Wednesday is R through Z. Again, Monday is A through H. Tuesday is I through Q, and Wednesday is R through Z. And then Thursday and Friday are unassigned. Um, so if you missed your day, you can call on Thursday or Friday, but ideally try and get in on the day that applies to your name. And the number is 
800-593-7660. Again, 800-593-7660. Um, and it's 8 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. I guess you can only call in the mornings. So um, that's what that looks like, a half day that they're available to take calls. And they have been swamped, so be patient. Um, okay. And so that's kind of our big updates. Um, the YMCA in Bath is making lunch every day, Monday through Friday, five days a week for free pickup, 1130 to 1230. So if you need a lunch in the middle of the day, Monday through Friday, the Bath YMCA is your place. We are going to start picking up uh, a batch of them um, several days a week and bringing them back to Brunswick. So if you're interested in a lunch from the Bath Y and you can maybe walk to the People Plus Center or stop by People Plus, we would be able to have them available. We're gonna pick them up at 11 a.m. at the Bath Y. And if it is something you're interested in, give us a call or an email because we can um, add you to the list, right? Today we're picking up 10. It's our first pickup day and Sarah's gonna head out there. She's picking up 10 lunches. And I kinda already have a feel for where all 10 of them are going. But if you want one tomorrow or the next day, we'll probably do a pickup. If we have a list that we can kinda put together for people, it might make sense to do it like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, and to work with the Bath Y on, you know, the number of lunches that, you know, they can't send a hundred with us, but they can probably do 10, 10 or 15, something like that. So let us know if you are in the Brunswick area, close to People Plus, and you want to stop by, we can potentially have lunches available through the Bath YMCA Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I think is how that's going to work. But email Jill at programming at peopleplusmain.org. Oh, you know what? Actually, you should email Sarah at reception at peopleplusmain.org and let us know. So it's reception. Sarah's email is reception, R-E-C-E-P-T-I-O-N, reception at peopleplusmain.org. Email her about the free lunch um, because that could be something that's really helpful. Um, and then I hope that you were able to get out over the weekend and get some good exercise. Uh, one of the things to be careful about are scams that are happening out there right now. It's a huge issue already. Um, people are, you know, calling and trying to um, convince you that they have your $1,200 uh, federal um, refund ready to go and they just need your bank account on how to deposit it. So if anyone calls you telling you something like that and asking for your bank account, hang up. Do not give anyone your bank account over the phone, no matter what, your social security number or your bank account. There, there are no federal programs that are calling people in their homes asking for that information. And that's really important um, for people to be aware of, that there are a lot of scammers out there right now taking advantage of people um, in the local area. It's terrible. Um, and then lastly, just wanted to touch base. If you live in Sagadahawk County, um, there is an emergency management agency set up to help you if you're 65 and older and you have any sort of vulnerability. So if you need food or help or transportation um, or you're sick or you're vulnerable in any way and you're over age 65, um, give them a call at 443-8210. Again, 443-8210. And um, they'll do a daily check-in call with you just to make sure everything's going well. Okay, and that's in Sagadahawk County. Um, okay, so Today is so beautiful, uh, it's gorgeous. It's already probably 50 degrees outside. And over the weekend, we got a lot of done up here on Mossy Ledge Farm. So I'm gonna take you outside and show you the garden. Jonathan and Gia, our dog, are already outside waiting. Um, what I will do first though is show you, um, we've got, oh, oh yeah. Okay, Jonathan wanted me to show you. This is the uh, guanciale. It's um, pig cheeks or jowls and he's been, um, he rubbed them with a cure and he's been marinating those for a week. They are gonna get hung from these hooks, which are pretty scary looking, um, down in the basement and they will hang down there and cure. So we're curing meat up here on Mossy Ledge Farm. And then this is set out for our dinner. Uh, we're gonna have, um, actually we're doing spaghetti and meatballs, but I couldn't find anything except jarred sauce and we never usually use uh, jarred sauce, but you know, there's nothing wrong with it, but we are gonna supplement it. So I've got some kind of ragged looking carrots and some celery and some onion, and we're gonna do a large chop with this. You could throw anything into it really. Um, we're actually using more than this. He just laid it out to be pretty and fancy because that's what Jonathan does. But uh, anyway, we're gonna throw in a bunch of vegetables and some of our own um, herbs. This is our sunset seasoning. It's like a Tuscan type seasoning. And I'm just gonna jazz up these sauces a little bit. Uh, but I wanted to bring you in and show you the plum cuttings. 
Look here. So uh, he cut them over the weekend. And well, I guess actually late last week, Thursday, maybe last week. And you can see that I'm trying to zoom in so that you can get, get a good up close. It's hard to kind of tell, but anyway, they're starting to pop. Um, and there you go. You can really see that the little buds are starting to show through. So we will have some sweet little plum blossoms in a vase in the kitchen. Won't that be neat? So anyway, okay. Alrighty, so let's go outside. We're going through the den. We've never walked through this room before. This is our den. That's a, a tapestry that we bought in, that I bought in Venice, Italy, and brought back to Jonathan when I was over there with Daphne. Do y'all remember that when I was with Daphne in Venice when she was looking at schools? So, all right, we're headed outside. You know, the other thing I did this weekend is I kind of got cleaned up. I cleaned out all our planters, but then after cleaning out the yard, realized I had so much fun stuff that I made another planter display and you can see it's sort of these dried um, hydrangeas. I've got dried sedum um, out of a plant and these dried seed pods, um, which I thought looked pretty neat, along with some fresh um, cuttings off of um, the, uh, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank on the name of it, off of our giant bush <laughs> and some red uh, branches from a bush. So anyway, I updated my planters on the front there. Um, and I think they look pretty good. You know, we don't have fresh flowers yet. Anyway, this is the um, the bush uh, that I cut those off of. And this is, it's got huge pink flowers on it. And I totally am spacing on the name of it right now. Um, anyway, so let's walk outside. Uh, we were just greeted by Gia. And over the weekend, we did a huge amount of cleanup. You can see it's just so nice out here now. Um, we have the pond. And Jonathan cleaned up the stairs going all the way down. We've got grapevines that grow all the way down these stairs that we're actually going to transplant. And they go down to the pergola. And then there's the pond. Um, and this is Bacchus, a uh, little statue here. Um, you know, the god of grapes. Um, they, he oversees all these grapevines. And Jonathan cleaned a bunch of this up over the weekend. We were out here doing a bunch of cleanup in the garden. We've got a massive load <laughs> ready to go into the compost pile. And uh, oh, we trimmed back the rugosas as well. Hey, honey. Hello. You want to come over? We'll do a little tour of the garden real fast. What year did you build this garden? Uh, 96, maybe. Yeah. So um, he laid it out. I'll try and step back and give you a wide angle look of it. So it's um, six big plots separated by bricks and at some point we probably you can see the bricks start to get a little uh with frost too those these will settle down um and then the one first one here on the right is the herb garden so why don't you tell us what we've got going on here in the herb garden uh well in the corners there are chives which are perennials of course so they come back every year and they grow really pretty it's nice to have them in the corners they kind of anchor things they also spread so you have to kind of keep your chives in check, um, but they get beautiful purple flowers on top. And then we cut and use them all the time and everything. And you can see here how the chive has started to creep around the garden. So this guy probably could be moved and put somewhere else. Yeah, we've given away a few babies over the years. Yeah. Uh, oregano. This one's oregano. Again, okay. Things that stay here and have been here for years. We actually took those out and cut them back because of the way they spread. Yep. Yeah, we uh, had a big oregano haircut last year. This is lemon balm, I believe. The one that smells like uh, furniture polish. Yeah, I don't like that one. Uh, this is thyme, which needs a haircut. Yep, I love the thyme. Thyme's great. Uh, and the sage and rosemary went in for the winter, so they'll be coming back out at some point. What's this guy? That, I think, is probably a black-eyed Susan or a purple cone. Oh, flower. yeah, that's so what that is, right. Um, a couple of those around. That is rue, yep. uh, which we don't actually use for anything, but it gets, uh, there are some really nice caterpillars that appear on it, usually in September. <laughs> and then this is another black-eyed Susan, I think, over yeah, there. Yeah, we've got a couple purple cone flowers that have been here Yeah, some years. cone flowers as well. And then this is the one I want to move, actually, this guy. It's a big patch of, what did you call it last night? Uh, I think that's Coreopsis. Coreopsis, it's yellow, and they're so pretty, and they don't grow super tall, and it spreads really, really well. So I'm actually going to clear all of this out right here and put it down around the pond where we need lots and lots and lots and lots of plantings. Um, okay, so this bed um, is the rhubarb. 
rhubarb. How do you say it in Maine? Rhubarb. Rhubarb. The rhubarb. And um, when I met Jonathan, there were two rhubarb plants in the back corners. And about four years ago, we dug those up, cut them into quarters, and now there are six rhubarb plants. So I guess we cut them into thirds. So, um, and they've done really, really well. You can see as I get down here close to it that all of them have beautiful little purple flowers coming up um, out of the ground and they kind of are at the corners. We um, love rhubarb for many, many different things. Jonathan's been making what he calls rube and bloob for years. He used to put it over yogurt or ice cream for his daughters and that's rhubarb and blueberries uh, that are cooked together. And then one of the things we make the most of is rube, rhubarb and strawberry jam. Um, and so we also have strawberries. We'll get to that in a minute. But the next plot over is, um, this is our garlic. It's garlic and shallots. There's some shallots in there too. Some shallots mixed in. So last year we kind of moved and cleaned up the, uh, the garlic patch and these will come in. They'll have those really pretty curly, um, you know, uh, curly cues on top called garlic scapes. Um, and you can see that is what the head of garlic, you plant one head and then it ends up growing. One, one I clove mean, one clove turns into a head. Yeah, so a clove of garlic will turn into a whole head of garlic. And so you just um, keep them going. You can see there where they're sort of pushing out of the ground right there, actually. Those are, are those the shallots? Uh, Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, ooh, sorry, Pip, I just stepped on the cap. Um, and you can see, yeah, these are kind of pushing up. So we've got a little work to do over here, but it's all cleaned out now and ready to go. And then um, we will plant these other beds are just open. Jonathan turned them over. He puts lime on the beds in the winter um, and that kind of seeps in all, all winter and helps to sort of tone down the acids. Um, and here's the strawberry bed. So on Saturday, we pulled out every strawberry plant, gave them a haircut, and then drop them back in. Oh, there's one here on the ground. There's one on the ground in between. We may want to get that back in the bed or, or not. I don't know. We have like 20 million strawberry plants at this point. Um, and they are kind of prolific for um, spreading and they'll send out little feelers uh, and those lines that go out will drop uh, roots down into the ground as well. So if you've got a strawberry plant uh, and you let it go for a while, you will soon have um, 25 strawberry plants. And I love them because they are perennials. Um, they just keep coming back and doing really well. And we have, like I said, started making strawberry rhubarb jam. And uh, so that's a big thing. Hello, Gia. Gia, Gia. no, no, Gia, get out, 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 hop out. Get out. Thank you. Um, and then over here, we'll do, I don't know what, what's gonna go in these planter boxes, they vary. Oh, we have actually, um, Ooh, uh, asparagus yeah so you can't really tell well you can kind of tell there's a little bit of a, a little yeah, bit of an asparagus new... but it'll take a little while to start seeing asparagus in the sky um, and then the one behind Jonathan is empty for now we've done sunflowers we've done potatoes we've done all kinds of different things in these raised beds and he put the raised beds over here because this corner of the garden is especially wet. You can see that it's just really, really squishy. There's so much water as I step down on the bricks um, that a raised bed really worked as a much better system um, than a ground bed. And then the other thing we got done over the weekend, and I say we as the royal we, because mostly Jonathan did it, um, is he cleared out all the grapevines that used to grow along this wall. So what happens is grapes are kind of like strawberries. They spread. And he planted these four master vines right here in front of each post, probably about the same time he did this garden. So I'm guessing they're what, 15 or 20 year old vines at this point. Um, and they had just spread and moved and spread and moved and sent out uh, little baby plants. And you can see here on this one, how they do that. There's lots of um, branches coming out of it. So what we did this weekend is we um, transplanted all of those baby vines um, and now we're down to the four master vines again, and we're going to train them to run up these. And then with stringing in between, we will run the grape leaves along the strings that will run in between or the wires that will run in between, uh, the posts. Um, and what I'm going to do is actually, um, add on 
our video that we shot over the weekend um, where we transplanted the grapevines and where I did some seeds, um, some seed pod cultivating. So um, you can see this fence here actually still has grapevines all over it. We've done some thinning here, but not enough. And then there's also this really thorny patch of raspberries or blackberries, sorry, blackberries. Um, and those are, they're kind of dangerous <laughs> um, and they probably need to be thinned as well. Um, but they've kind of taken over right there. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the tour of the garden for right now. Thanks, honey. Appreciate it. I showed everybody the uh, guanciale. Oh, good. Yeah, which is good. So, um, all right, I'm going to sign off for, uh, we'll sign off for today and, um, we'll see you tomorrow back on the people plus community update. We hope you guys are staying at home and staying healthy and we can't wait to see you back at the center. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.